Shout out Fern. Inside a stuffy field office of the FBI. My workplace mention. Nigga, you work at McDonald's? Oh, yeah, you shouldn't have told me that, nigga. Hey, nigga, go make me some nuggets, nigga. Go make me some McNuggets right now. 20 of them bitches. I need them bitches fresh, too. I need them bitches fresh, and they better be fucking crispy, nigga. In Jacksonville. It's a notoriously sleepy outpost of the Bureau. Nigga, <laughs> <Until today. laughs> I can't, bitch ass. Put the fries in the bag! The informant calls up the office to let them know that the famous beloved McDonald's Monopoly game is rigged. Oh, oh, it was a it was a McDonald's Monopoly game. I think that bitch had been discontinued when I was like in three years old, nigga, because I barely remember that. Old. A ring of criminals have been secretly pulling the strings for over a decade. What? More than twenty-four million dollars have been stolen. The FBI kicks off a manhunt. With Niggas was taking McDonald's Monopoly this serious? What the fuck? You could rent, you could win like real money off that bitch. You could win like real bread. Nigga, I thought all you could win off that bitch was just like a fucking Big Mac, nigga. 25 agents on the case. 20,000 phone numbers will be surveilled. It will ultimately result in a massive million dollar prizes. The what the will fuck? That behind this scheme is a vast network of mafiosos, psychics, strip club owners, and Mormons. But one mastermind. Oh, this finna be a good vid. Oh, this finna be a good vid. Oh, this finna be a good vid and rakes in most of the profits. He's known by most as Uncle Jerry. How Uncle Jerry is crazy. One of my coworkers got a hundred K. This shit was like the McLottery. Damn. Why well, I never heard of this shit, bro. What the fuck? Oh, Fern going crazy. Look, nigga, do you see the intro this nigga just made? Yeah, he trying his hardest. Nigga, I ain't never seen no nigga do these animations. Yeah, he trying his hardest. It's the Monopoly game. Only at I respect it. I respect it. Prizes, super -sized excitement. Starting in 1987, McDonald's launched the Monopoly promotion and started putting little game pieces from Monopoly onto their packaging. This is Jeff Mish. He's a crime journalist who broke the story in 2018, 17 years after the convictions. His article Damn. went viral and set off a holiday bidding war for the rights to his story. He ultimately sold them for $1 million. Hollywood? Well, actually, I have one here. I don't collect many- Is that what the McDonald's movie was about? Nah, 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 it wasn't. It wasn't. It was about how that shit started, wasn't it? I do have one of the original uh, winning game cups here. Uh, it says, pull to play. And on the side, you can just see it says, uh, to collect and win, just peel off the game stamp and apply to your game board. And when you've applied enough pieces to your game board and you've won a prize, you mail it off to McDonald's uh, and they send you your Sega Game Gear or your Dodge Viper. What? McDonald's usually runs the game twice per year. The cash prizes are up to $1 million in an instant win. The chance at winning that prize is 1 in 250 million. The game brings McDonald's fat profits. Whenever the game is running, business increases by up to 40% more than usual. 1 in 250 million is an extremely long shot. You're far more likely to get struck by lightning twice. Wow. 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 But the What's the odds of winning like the regular lottery? Is it higher than that? The on the phone with the agents in Jacksonville that day said that three of the recent big ticket winners were in fact related despite having different names. The odds for three legitimate winners to all be related are inconceivably low. The caller also claimed that one man, who they only knew by Uncle Jerry, was the mastermind behind the scheme. The Uncle FBI doesn't Jerry. know this yet, but his full name is Jerome Jacobson. Oh, sh what the fuck, Jerome J- <laughs> Oh, shit. In a case like this, the FBI might have to surveil suspects to collect- Jerome! But what if someone collects all this information about you and they don't have a legitimate reason? Today, the internet is full of threats. Some of them involve our most sensitive information. This ni How did he just hit me with an ad so smoothly? I've never seen a nigga hit me with an ad that smooth ever in my life. Jerry Jacobson is one of those just incredible characters in American true crime history. Oh, wow. Because he was, a, he was a, at one stage a good guy, uh, a police officer. Uh, Wait, go back. 
because he was a he a white nigga named Jerome, a white old man named Jerome. Never seen it. So at one stage, a good guy, uh, a police officer uh, in in Florida. As a kid, Jerry is obsessed with becoming an FBI agent. When he starts working as a police officer, it seems like he's on that track. But his career in law enforcement is very brief. He develops health problems and is unable to continue. Damn. Later, he finds a job in security at Simon Marketing. This is where he really finds his stride. He's known for being ultra professional and ultra fastidious. Okay. So he quickly rises to the ranks. In just a few years, he's earning six times his police officer salary. Damn. At that corporate bread. He's now the head of security at Simon Marketing. Oh. McDonald's outsources almost all of their promotional activity to the company. Oh. So when the chain comes up with the ingenious idea of starting a monopoly promotion, Simon Marketing is tasked with producing and distributing the game pieces. So basically, this nigga was doing well before he got into any of this shit. This nigga was doing swell in life. He was doing nice. So it was Jerry's job to ensure the security of the entire promotion. So he arrived at work, he had to supervise the big supercomputer that would draw the winning piece. He would supervise the technicians who were putting the winning tokens onto the packaging. He had to personally scissor them out uh, from a, a printing press. Jerry's a tough boss. As a former cop, he's obsessed with rules and security. Oh. He's constantly writing up people for little missteps. Oh. He hounds everyone in the factory involved in token production. Oh, he wanted them. He wanted them hoe ass bosses. Oh, I hate niggas like those. Even following them to the bathroom and checking their shoes to make sure none have been stolen. What the fuck? Jerry personally delivers the winning pieces to McDonald's packaging factories across the country. He hides each piece in a secret vest that he wears under his shirt as what? he's traveling around the United States, feeling a little bit like a secret agent or a superhero with a secret. Every time he arrives in a new state, he's carrying a secret piece that's gonna make somebody a millionaire. When new game pieces mm. are released, Jerry makes a big flashy show of how secure the process was. In truth, Jerry starts stealing from McDonald's. Ooh. His first theft, is small fry. Okay. At this point, he only wants to help his stepbrother Marvin Braun out and maybe show off a bit to prove that he can. Okay. So in okay. 1989, Le he gives Marvin a game piece worth twenty-five thousand dollars. Marvin is the nigga. I thought you said little. Nigga, twenty-five bands in the eighties. The fuck, nigga, that shit ain't little. I'm a slow ass typer. Sixty-three bands. Pretty much a victimless crime, right? McDonald's is giving away the money anyway. And it's not like the chain is some noble charity. The game earns them considerable profits. Plus, Jerry later testifies that whenever the computer selected a Canadian factory to get a winning token, Simon Marketing would allegedly run the program again so that a US location was chosen. In Jerry's view, this means the game is already rigged in favor of American players. So why not get his own piece of the pie? Huh? I mean, nigga, cause, huh? And it's not like the chain is some noble charity. The game earns them considerable profits. Plus, Jerry later testifies that whenever the computer selected a Canadian factory to get a winning token, Simon Marketing would allegedly run the program again so that a U.S. location was chosen. In Jerry, oh, oh, so everybody else was getting hold except the U.S. This means the game is already rigged in favor of American players. So why not get his own piece of the pie? And then one day he's talking to his butcher in the local supermarket and he tells the butcher what's going on and the butcher says, well, I'd like to win. Jerry agrees, but he wants to make sure that nothing traces back to him. So he instructs the butcher- Nigga, are you telling me this nigga just, 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 <laughs> what the Nigga, this nigga just started a fucking million dollar scheme with his butcher? Give the prize to a friend of his. And of course, Jerry turns on his television one day and there's a commercial from McDonald's with a lucky winner on it. And he sees his butcher celebrating his win and he goes crazy. And he calls the butcher and says, what are you doing? We know each other. You can't, you, <laughs> we're friends. Uh, so <laughs> Jerry decides that in the future, he's gonna have to find winners at random. He needs people that are not connected to him at all. Uh, and so the conspiracy grows bigger. Mm, Until this point, okay. it's all relatively small amounts of money. 
But one day, I don't know why he's saying relatively small, nigga. He gave his fucking his stepbrother whatever whatever fuck it was twenty five bands, nigga. That's not small. He receives a package by mistake, and inside a blank set of anti tamper seals from Hong Kong, which means that. He has everything he needs to open the envelopes and steal the game pieces for himself and then use a spare seal to stick it back down and basically get away with- Oh! Oh, he finna go crazy! Marketing, the company that Jerry works for hires an independent auditor to make sure everything's going okay. Remember, this is a multi-million dollar promotion. They have to be all buttoned up. The auditor is a very serious woman. She means business. She accompanies Jerry everywhere, and Jerry's always getting on her nerves. When he wants to fly first class on the company card, she insists on sitting in coach. Mm. He's getting drunk and bragging to her about it, showing off the empty liquor bottles. He's shutting up whoever will listen, bragging about once having been a cop. He's also obsessed with accumulating airline points, so he's flying to factories in random cities just because. Okay. And the whole time she has to follow him. Oh. She's watching Uncle Jerry like a hawk. Her job is to make sure that when Jerry hands the winning ticket over to a factory, that everything goes as it should, that the tickets always stay in a special security vest. And they do, up to a point, the point where she can't follow him. The bathroom. In the bathroom, Jerry quits procrastinating. With a few quick, deliberate movements, he takes the envelopes with winning pieces out of his vest, opens the seal, and replaces them with regular game pieces. He seals the envelope back down with one of his special anti-tamper seals. The oh, this from Hong nigga. Kong. Nigga, how the fuck did he get the seals from Hong Kong? How did he get that shit? If the anti-tamper seals had not been accidentally mailed to him, and the auditor assigned to him hadn't been female, maybe none of this would have happened. Mm. Or maybe if he ignored the temptation, he would have enjoyed a nice, normal, comfortable life. Adjusted for inflation, he was earning over 170k per year. Oh, this nigga was good. He just he just doing this shit for the love of the game. I respect it. For Jerry, the opportunity to control the game is no accident. He doesn't believe in accidents. He's a superstitious man. Mm. I know that at that time, <laughs> this is this is kind of silly. Uh, at this time, he he starts seeing uh, psychics and mediums. What? Uh, to reassure him. He's a strong believer in paranormal and uh, faith healers. So he starts seeing mediums and psychics and fortune tellers. Okay. Jerry now has full access to the winning game pieces, but he can't cash them in himself, of course. That would arouse suspicion. He needs to find fake winners who will pay him upfront for the game piece. His butcher, for example, asks a distant friend to pay $2,000 for a $10,000 winning ticket. The higher the prize, the higher the cost up to $100,000 up front for a $1 million ticket. Mm. And it works. But quickly, Jerry starts to tap through his network. He needs to put distance between himself and the winners. He's on the look for middlemen, well-connected people who can industrialize the operation. And being a superstitious person, he takes chance encounters as meaningful signs. This nigga smart as shit. He really used his fucking brain power and thought this whole shit through. This whole plan, that nigga was like, ah, nah, I can't just hand this shit out to a nigga and tell him pay me. Nah, 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 nigga, I need a fucking middleman. Yeah, this nigga got it, bro. So he's at the airport one day and he meets another Jerry, Jerry Colombo. And the two hit it off, waiting there for their aeroplanes. Mr. Colombo is a very heavy set Italian American gentleman. And Mr. Colombo claimed that he was part of the infamous Colombo crime family. What the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> nigga, it's like everything is falling into this nigga hands. Nigga, what type of shit? Colombo is a larger than life character, like someone who modeled his whole personality off of the Sopranos, and Uncle Jerry is lapping it all up. He's an entertainer, he says he's born in Sicily, raised in Brooklyn, he's got these underground casinos, and I think Jerry is just completely enamored by him. And he also seems like the type of guy that could find winners really easily. Colombo even has an out of zone strip club. I ain't gonna lie, nigga, that nigga can't be in the mafia, nigga, cause like, you telling me this random mafia nigga is telling this random ass to what he thinks is a civilian? Yeah, I do all these crimes and shit. South Carolina, that he got designated as a house of worship in order to skirt regulations. He calls it the Church of the Fuzzy Bunnies, and he has the dancers read the Bible before they start stripping. 
Um, well, I guess God hasn't talked to you lately. He okay. came to me in a dream a couple weeks ago, and he told me what I'm doing is fine. Uncle Jerry huh. appreciates Columbo's ability to think outside the box. It doesn't take much to rope Columbo into the scam. Uncle Jerry passes Columbo a game piece for a Dodge Viper, and Columbo is hooked. He is also obsessed with the Godfather, surprise, surprise, and has dreams of being an actor. So he agrees to be in a McDonald's commercial, waving a car key. Jerry Columbo won a Dodge Viper, and there are two. What the he gets the fuck? Of his acting ambitions, but it means he's now too close to the game to profit from it directly. So he has to start finding other winners, which helps the scheme take off for Uncle Jerry. Columbo is brilliant at finding new winners willing to pay, and he sends the majority of the kickbacks to Uncle Jerry. The two Jerrys are making each other very rich. Jerry Columbo keeps picking Italian American men on the East Coast as winner, and his father in law gets a $1 million piece. Not exactly the move of a mastermind mafioso. To make the win seem random, his wife Robin convinces him to get women and people of color winning tickets mm. in other parts of the country. For a while, it's all going so well. But then, everything changes. Oh shit. Twelve! Not going very well in Columbo's marriage. Robin Columbo's feeling like she might not want to be a mafia wife. Ooh. She's feeling a bit paranoid about life in the mob. Ooh. And one day she's driving with her husband, Columbo, and suddenly a massive Ford truck smashes into them. And it's a horrendous high-speed crash, and their car is crushed against a concrete wall. Columbo is taken to the hospital, where he takes a turn for the worse. Damn! He dies a few days after the crash. Now Uncle Jerry is alone. Oh, shit! That shit just went 180! Was the nigga that crashed into that nigga also a mafia nigga? Cause like, nigga, you telling me this nigga just got straight smacked into a fucking concrete wall? Nigga, what are the odds, bro? He's just lost his super recruiter, and he doesn't know it yet, but the FBI is on his trail. Hey, Not no, the fans. No, so many people could have called the FBI. A disgruntled winner. Remember, a lot of these winners, they, their lives changed. One minute they're poor, the next minute they got a million bucks. They're driving around in a Corvette. There's a lot of jealousy. There's now so many corrupt winners out there. Dozens of people. They might be drunk, bragging about it at the bar. Uncle Jerry finds new recruiters to replace Jerry Colombo's role. Some are dodgy, like the drug trafficker AJ Glomp. He's just jump on for a 12 year sentence for shipping kilos of cocaine across the US Damn. and sells most of his winning pieces to buddies in the drug dealing business. Yes. Other recruiters that Uncle Jerry yeah, that nigga dumb as shit. finds are seemingly upstanding, like the Mormon Dwight Baker, a beloved member of his church with no previous criminal record. He's a real estate developer with five kids trying to get his dreams for a golf course and a luxury resort off the ground. Mm. But he struggled to find investors and he also owes tens of thousands of dollars in back taxes. Damn. A windfall would really help him, so despite his moral misgivings, he gets involved in the scheme too. But none of the recruiters are careful enough. The winners they select aren't random. Bro. It always be other niggas fucking it up for you. Remember that, bro. Back in 2000, when the FBI gets the name Uncle Jerry from the informant, they know nothing about who it could be. Is he a McDonald's insider? Is it even a real name? McDonald shares the contact information of all the previous winners with the FBI. To find out who Uncle Jerry is, the officers analyze the winners' phone records to determine who they were in frequent contact with right around the time of their win. All these people, who are seemingly unrelated and don't know each other, were in contact with a certain Jerome Jacobson. The FBI is sure they found their man, but they need proof, like a taped conversation with Jerry and a fake winner that spells out what they're up to, evidence that no jury could deny. They convince McDonald's to run one more Monopoly game to catch him red-handed. It's certainly a reputational risk for the company. How would the public feel if they found out McDonald's had run a game they knew was rigged? But the company also wants to know who'd stolen millions from them, so they comply. Together with McDonald's, the FBI come up with uh, a McSting. They create two big wins. Like you didn't even have to, you didn't even have to come up with that name, bro. Like you just worth $1 million each. They then monitor Jerry Jacobson and his network closely and wait for someone to claim the prices. They listen in on a phone call of a friend of the Mormon Dwight Baker, Huey. He says that he plans to sell the winning prize to someone in Texas. This someone turns out to be his brother-in-law, who tries to claim the price a few days later. Nigga. The second big winner is Michael Hoover. He was recruited by Andrew Glom, the drug trafficker. 
Now, Mr. Hoover is bankrupt and a casino pit boss in Rhode Island. Uh, Why do this nigga keep picking criminals? Nigga, are you, are you fucking dumb? Nigga, the feds is looking at this shit like, huh? Why the fuck is all of these winning tickets going out to shitty people? Huh? So a bit of a sketchy character. So like, bro. He rings the hotline and says, I found a million dollar game ticket. So the FBI and McDonald's decide to go down there to meet him. They knock on the door, they've got a giant check, you know, the comedy sized checks, and a video crew, and all of the McDonald's staff are actually FBI agents who are undercover. And so they do a television interview, and Mr. Hoover gives this long winded story about how he found his magic ticket. He bought a copy of a magazine and the magazine had fallen into the sea and then he bought another magazine and the ticket was in there so the camera crew listened to this very patiently the men behind the camera are undercover fbi agents and they give him his prize and they take all that evidence and not long after that the fbi descend and they arrest everyone so the fbi fans out they arrest uncle jerry at home I know that nigga when they came to his doorstep nigga, I know that nigga was probably pissed. Over 50 people were indicted and dozens of wins were proven to be fake. Jerry admitted on the stand to having stolen 60 game pieces. Damn. And for a while, America followed the consequences intensely. So many millions had played the McDonald's game, so people were invested in the story. Burger King tried to get a class action lawsuit together, alleging fake advertisement. The trial began on September 10th, 2001. Then the world's attention shifted. Ooh. There were bigger things to care about than the McDonald's PR scandal. Yeah. So his trial Nearly got held up. 53 defendants pled guilty, including Uncle Jerry. Fines were issued and prison time was sentenced. Uncle Jerry got the most, $12 million in restitution fees. Oh! Oh! Oh no. I ain't gonna lie, nigga. I just tell niggas to just put me in jail for the rest of my life, nigga. I'm never making that shit up, nigga. It's over. A 37 month prison sentence. Simon. 37 months is not. <laughs> that's not a lot at all. Marketing and the printing company who made the tokens were gutted, leaving hundreds jobless. And Dwight Baker was excommunicated from the Mormon church. The game of Monopoly was invented in the 1930s, the decade Damn. of the Great Depression. Oh, that game! Activist. She intended to teach people about the evils of wealth accumulation. By the 1980s, the decade of greed, the game's original purpose was distorted. McDonald's, a multi-billion dollar corporation, used it as a way to make even more money. Then, that game was overtaken by an ex-cop called Uncle Jerry, who defrauded the corporation of millions. Damn. He turned himself into a real-life Uncle Pennybags, running around the United States giving some people money, but taking more for himself. I ain't gonna lie, nigga. That's kind of hard. No cap. I ain't gonna lie. That, that shit kind of hard. Nigga really running around the whole states like a like a secret a Like a secret agent. The perfect American Stupid fable. Ass. Uncle Jerry lived the high life for over a decade. But as anyone who's played Monopoly knows, sometimes you have to go to jail. It's just part of the game. Hell yeah. Considering the huge amount of money stolen, the high price the investigation cost U.S. citizens and the many people who lost their jobs through no fault of their own, Uncle Jerry's three-year sentence feels like a light slap on the wrist. He's retired in- Nigga, 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 he got 12 mil in, in fees, nigga, no, nigga, that wasn't no slap on the wrist, nigga, that nigga owed 12 million dollars! Georgia with his seventh wife in a nice that big house. God damn, nigga, fuck! Sure, he has to pay back 12 million dollars but at a relaxed rate of just $370 per month. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, never mind. Yeah, 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 that nigga's good. Damn. So, like, do that debt, like, when he died, is that shit gonna get, like, added to, like, his kids and shit? Because that, that would, that would kind of suck. Besides, people who are close to him are sure he kept some millions buried as a contingency plan. That's just the kind of guy he was. This is a good video. This is a good-ass video. Good shit, Fern. Good shit.